Swissborg is the official partner of my channel where you can buy, sell, hold, and more importantly, stake your cryptocurrencies. You can even earn yield on your stable coins. Sign up with my link and you'll earn up to $100 worth of their native token CHSB just for depositing 50 euros worth of crypto. Swissborg. Hello everybody, welcome back. We're basically doing a repeat of yesterday, but this time we're just going to focus on Bitcoin. So everything basically uh, over the last 24 hours has been the most boring day in crypto I've, I can remember in a long time. Basically sideways. So more or less the analysis from yesterday remains the same. So all these divergences on the altcoins, uh, they're all still there. But it does appear that the... Uh, the skepticism um, has flooded into the crypto market and uh, and, it, and it's basically just static until traditional markets open. Now we might find a move today and the only reason I say that is because um, uh, Bollinger Bands are pinching quite tight on the lower term time frames. We've got a, uh, a range of about 1.5% just over that on the one hourly and two hourly is, what's this, about three two and a half percent maybe yeah so so the, the Bollinger Bands are pinching this is normally a sign of uh, incoming volatility so it, it, this sort of boring sideways range won't stay for very long it's going to do something bigger than yeah but yes it's probably going to choose its direction now like I said a few days ago, my expectation is is that we do go into one last pump before a crash. Um, there's other reasons that have been sort of brought to my attention yesterday. Say so someone on the Telegram showed, I don't know how to validate it, but uh, showed that there's tons and tons and tons, billions uh, of uh, short positions being applied to all markets from the retailers, right? So retailers are getting particularly short on this area and they've already allocated billions of dollars worth of positions in shorts. Now, if you look back at the analysis that I showed on Friday, which was due to the currency markets having, you know, as in like a uh, euro and pound and I suppose yen, you know, having such a uh, a big pullback, and again, this pullback is is a downtrend that's gathering momentum. You know, if you go back weeks and months, you'll see me talking about how the euro and the pound is going to keep going down for a prolonged period of time. So they are going to keep going down, but they have both reached an area of significance where I'd expect to bounce, and that should should impact the Dixie ever so slightly as the Dixie approaches its top. So we could move up another one or two percent maybe for the Dixie, and another you know maybe two or three percent down on the pound and maybe half a percent for the euro but at that point then i'd be looking for a bit of a um a, a bouncy move on euro and pound and a pullback on the dixie and that's going to cause the bounce in all markets you know that's that's my favored uh, outcome doesn't mean it's the only one but that that you know when i'm when we're talking strategies you're planning out how you're going to play certain moves you, you know you can't just say i'm all in on this one it's definitely going to have nothing else blah, blah, blah. Now you you, you got you got to think. All right, well this is my favoured uh, outcome. Uh, if this doesn't work, it means that we break down further. And if we break down below supports for the euro and pound, which is more or less where they're sort of close to right now, then it gets particularly nasty, and we have a big breakout for the Dixie. That's that's uh, strategy number two, and that would basically mean we go straight into a crash, probably, or or significant continued downside for all markets. But until we see the mon uh, Monday open, we see all these currencies start to flicker around and move about and see if they actually do maintain this support in the short term. Um, it, w it looks as though crypto is basically on the sidelines going, well, I don't know what's going on. I've got to wait for those currency markets to open. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, charts will either break out or break down on their own. But there is, a, like I say, it was the most boring day yesterday. And I imagine for the most part, it's going to be boring today. So for Bitcoin, uh, this is this is basically us. We're sideways in this Bollinger Band range, just on this four hourly, getting tighter and tighter and tighter. It is descending. We can see that. It is, it is getting lower. So the highs are, are getting lower and the lows are, well, actually getting higher, to be honest with you. So very much in keeping with a... Uh, a, a potential uh, waiting for volatility to break if you were to look closely at something like this and we zoom right in close and expand the uh, the chart effectively what we are looking at is a uh, is a symmetrical triangle which you know for the most part has a 50 50 percent chance of breaking out and we're getting towards the end of the apex which favors a, a fake out or a fake breakdown as well so in volatility likely to expand my my expectation is like i say the, the the latter the one i explained on friday the one that i'm focused on which is a a breakout a pump one last rally um uh, before the crash because the larger move uh, given to us by the state of currency markets which seem to be the main focus on on governing 
any other trend on any other chart because they all impact the Dixie to such a large extent and they are all certainly going to keep going down as far as I can see, um, then, then yeah, it would appear that uh, downside is the most likely overall, but that's after the pump. So the analysis I've said Friday and yesterday <coughs> remains the same. Um, but until we see, uh, maybe even wait for currency markets to open tonight, really, uh, and, and see what happens then. Maybe we just uh, go sideways in this symmetrical triangle formation. We can hold out for this for the rest of the day until until those currency markets open. And then we might see the move. So yeah, boring sideways, but volatility getting ready to expand. And that would be in keeping with either the initial straightaway forward massive crash or uh, we actually see the fake out, which liquidates all those retailers who have positioned themselves into shorts. Like I say, sometimes it is better to sit on the sidelines, although I do favor a um, you know the last pump before the uh, before the crash. That's, that is my favored position, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, there's really nothing outside of this chart, which is in any way um, telling and there's really no difference to, to what we're seeing here a bullish divergence on your 12 hourly favors further upside on a 12 hourly uh, daily uh, again you could cast this as bullish divergence on your daily also uh, it's only the shorter term time frames which are basically saying I don't know what I want to do I'm just going to hang around in the middle and do but uh, yeah, it, it, there's, there's really nothing more to it. it exactly the same analysis applies from yesterday and the day before so there's not really much point in me yeah uh, trying to expand uh, you know elaborate on these um, on this analysis when basically it remains exactly the same so let's sit back watch and wait whether you're long short in positions or out there's really no way to exactly know the exact direction, although I do favour upside ever so slightly. Um, there's, there's no real way to know, and it is a matter of waiting for those currency markets to open to see what effect that has on the Dixie. And recognise that you know the, the, the pound, for instance, uh, is not quite at support, although it's close. Same with um, euro, that's not quite at the perfect support. Uh, but it is close. So we could we could see the Dixie go up a little bit more before it goes down. Again, all of this has been explained on Friday's video. Anyway, good luck out there. Uh, it might be worth just taking the day off, chilling out, doing something else, because uh, <laughs> this is it's so boring. So boring at the moment. Volatility will enter this probably next week, maybe even early, maybe as soon as Monday. Um, but uh, as to the exact direction, uh, there's no 100% guarantee it's going to go either way. But again, I do favour a upside before a crash just as I said on Friday. Right, thanks for watching. Hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.